give me another time. Welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. Next on the show, we pay tribute to Texas's Danish history. And I'm not talking about the pastries. You see, down here in Danavain, you'll find the Danish Heritage Museum. It pays tribute to the folks that settled this area all those years ago. In the southernmost tip of Wharton County, just off of Highway 71, you'll think you're in another part of the world when you come across the flag of Denmark being whipped around by a bitter cold front that could set the sail of the biggest Viking vessel. But not to worry, this stop pays tribute to the Danish settlers of another sort, the ones that came to this part of Texas back in the 1800s. Known as the Danish capital of Texas, Danavain was established in the 1890s by nearly 100 Danish families who left Iowa to find a better life in a warmer part of the country. Now, there weren't many Danish who dashed for the South. That's why Danavain is the destination to go for the Danish Heritage Museum. We not only represent the Danes who settled here, but really it's what the people who came to Texas, to this part of Texas, to farm, to ranch, were like in the late 1800s. Sandra Peterson is married to one of the descendants of the Danes and now finds herself dishing out the details of the Danish way of life. They came first and they wanted to, to farm wheat and barley. Well, they found out very quickly that wheat and barley didn't work here. And so the other farmers around taught them about cotton and they started growing cotton. And for a long time, that's all you have found in Danavang was cotton. We're here for the culture. And when it comes to Denmark, you start with the longest line of nobility the world has ever seen. Well, uh, it's not too often you see a king and queen in a place in Texas, but you guys got them here, huh? Well, we do. And uh, this is Queen Marguerite of Denmark and Prince Henrik. Uh, she is the descendant of the original king of Denmark. And that's the oldest kingdom in the world, over a thousand years, that they have had a continuous reign of a family. There's also the Bing and Grindel Christmas plate collection, made in Denmark for a very long time. So even though these are Christmas plates, you guys have these up year round? Absolutely. The plates start in 1895 and go all the way to the present. There's only one other collection like this, and it ain't in Texas. Each of these, once they're made, the mold is destroyed. Treasured by play collectors, this art is part of the Danish heritage. Each one tells a story. We're very proud of these plates. Of course, you'll find pictures of the past, the town's old post office, and a tribute to Danish locals who have served in the armed forces. But a really interesting exhibit takes a look at life back at the turn of the century. And that's where local Susan Barrett took us. All right, Susan, so what is it you guys got over here? It looks pretty interesting. We have the, we call it our Pioneer House. It's pre-1920. Everything inside of our Pioneer House is pre-1920. It was the home of H.P. and Marin Jensen. This home was purchased out of the Sears and Roebuck catalog and delivered via train to Danavain over 100 years ago. So I see the closet. I see the two bedrooms, but uh, where's the bathroom? The bathroom is right here. Oh, oh goodness. Once in the kitchen, we finally get to hear about some Danish pastries. But it might not be what you're thinking of. Now, this looks like a pan for biscuits, but it's called a what? An Ebeskeeber? Ebeskeeber pan. What you would do is you would take and you would mix up like a pancake batter. Mm -hmm. You would pour it in here, and then you would put apples, sliced apples or jelly or some kind of fruit uh -huh. in the center of it. And then the bottom would cook, and once it cooks, you roll it. Mm -hmm. And it makes, it cooks, and it cooks into a ball. Once it's done, you take it out, sprinkle it with powdered sugar or syrup, and that's a very Danish tradition that all the Danes enjoy, and it's it's a pastry that they really enjoy. I'm ready for one now. You got me on that one. <laughs> this was my husband's mother's pan, and I told him he might as well donate it because I'm not going to make Ebeskeever. <laughs> so where do we get an Ebeskeever? <laughs> Despite not being able to get Ebeskeever, the museum does draw quite a crowd. And as you can imagine, many tourists from Denmark have found their way to Danavain. They're very impressed. They're very proud uh, that they see how we are preserving their heritage, their history. They're very proud at the way we're representing Denmark. They compare us to 
the big Danish museum in Elkhorn, Iowa, and the Danish community in Solvang, California. And a number of them say, this is what the real people were like who lived here. The Danish Heritage Museum of Danavang, a chance to learn more about the history and incredible culture of Texas. It demonstrates the tenacity and the will of people to survive over great obstacles when they first came and through the first 40 years. It's just a piece of Americana that's very unique.